welcome all of us. Um, and this evening, or this morning, today, we are gathered to pay our tributes and our respects to a great man, Mr. Oscar Fernandez. Many of us have known him personally. We have family here. There's Oshani here representing the family. Welcome, Oshani. Thank you for making the time available. There's Oshan as well here. Good to see you, Oshan. I see Ashfaq, who's literally been the right hand of uh, uh, Oscar G. And good to have you, Ashfaq. And uh, we have our chief guest, um, uh, Mr. Dr. Um, Sam Petroda, who will be in joining us shortly. And we have got our guests of honor coming in. Uh, some, of the, some of the guests of honor have already come in. But I want to focus on the life of Oscar Fernandez. This evening, it's all about remembering the impact that this man has had on our lives, on the lives of millions of others. And let's focus on this. I'd like to start by thanking God for the opportunity of, of meeting and being impacted by this great man. Really, I'm very grateful to God for you know the huge impact that he has had. And, and Oshani and Osham, I can imagine how grateful you are to God for the impact he's had on your lives as a father. And, uh, you know, and this evening we want all of that to come out you know, as much as possible in this limited time of 90 minutes. Um, I'd like to start the evening by showing us a clip of a film. And this is on 15th of August 2013. It, for me personally, it's a watershed moment because, you know, it's been years that I've been talking to Oscar to, until that point about the need for a national identity through song. You know, Oscar loved music and we'll talk about that. And we used to have a lot of conversations about this one song that we feel should take prominence in the life of every citizen of India and every overseas citizen. And uh, let's, without much ado, let's play this short clip and I'm going to request you at the end of it to stand up and you will know why okay so let's listen to this clip uh this was actually uh yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of images that come from memories of years before this point in time on 15th of august 2013 and of course we'll talk about the time after that but let's start with this film on the 67th year of independence, a special program Jan Ganman has been celebrated in Gurgaon Epicenter Auditorium where Sri Oscar Fernandez, Honorable Minister of Roadways, Transport and Highways, graced the occasion with his presence. <laughs> Cherish independence which was given to Indians by the sacrifice of our freedom fighters and we remember and celebrate the occasion in their honor. Colorfully dressed school children gave variety program to celebrate Independence Day and their performances were enjoyed by everyone around. <laughs> been 66 years since we have had our independence and we are honored to have our chief guest Sri Oscar Fernandez ji honorable minister of road transport and highways being present here thank you sir for gracing the occasion कार्यक्रम देश का सारे निवासियों को पसंद होने वाले एक कार्यक्रम एक कार्यक्रम में कोई डिफरेंसेस नहीं है कंट्रोवर्सी नहीं है देश का सारा 
लोगों को इकट्ठा करने वाले कार्यक्रम में एक राग में एक स्वर में बोलने वाले कार्यक्रम में वही जन गण मन ये कार्यक्रम में कोई फर्क नहीं सारा देश का निवासी लोग एक आवाज में बोलेंगे जन गण Um, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Rajiv Gowda, a former member of parliament and someone who's closely worked with Oscar Fernandez uh, as a parliamentarian. Uh, Sri Rajiv Gowda, welcome. Thank you so much, Aubrey. And um, <clears throat> it's really fitting that you've organized this musical tribute. And um, uh, uh, the Fernandez family and all of us who are his well wishers and close um, <clears throat> friends, um, colleagues would, uh, you know, recall that Oscar Anna, as we called him, was actually a very talented musician and dancer and uh, uh, someone who really enjoyed the fine arts. And so this is an appropriate uh, tribute to uh, such a versatile man. Um, I must tell you, I was, uh, you know, a, a teenager when Oscar Anna first burst upon the scene in 1980 as a giant killer. He defeated uh, T.A. Pai in Urupi, in the Lok Sabha election, and then uh, went on uh, to win that seat for uh, five more terms before moving to the Rajya Sabha, uh, where he stayed uh, un until his um, recent passing. And I had an opportunity to work with him for six years as, um, uh, as a member of the Rajya Sabha as well. Um, but our relationship goes much, uh, much, more, much, much more um, deeper. My uh, late father, M. V. Venkatapa, was Speaker of the Karnataka Assembly. That's the last position he held. But he was a very strong organization man and uh, worked very closely with Oscar Anna when he first came back to Bangalore as an MP and took over as President of the Karnataka Pradesh Congress Committee. And uh, so we've had this you know, uh, political connection for a very long time. And um, as a youngster, when I came back to India in, um, in, in 2000, I, I went away to America in 1984, studied and worked there as a professor, came back to India with the desire to serve the nation through politics. And um, one of the first people I met after my return was Oscar Arno. Now, partly because we knew each other, but more than that, also because when you think about the Congress High Command and how um, those of us who are coming from far away would uh, wonder who can we meet and is it possible to talk to uh, the powerful leaders that we have in Delhi, um, the one person who was always on any trip accessible um, was Oscar. He would say, come and meet me at 12.30 or something like in the middle of the night, of course. And I'm a very early sleeper, but uh, I would somehow manage to, uh, you know, have some extra cups of coffee and uh, show up. And there he would be, you know, with a large number of people from very different backgrounds, Congress people from around the country, uh, you know, explaining their concerns, sharing their woes, and getting a reassurance, a, a very good hearing, from Oscar Anna, which is what most of us really wanted. And, um, uh, and, and then, of course, there would be people from different backgrounds who were possibly poor people who needed help, who needed some assistance, 
and they would all be there. This, you know, middle of the night in uh, the Congress office, uh, and later well, when he was a minister in one or two of the other bhavans uh, where his office was. And so that's one of the ma you know marks of uh, Oscar Rana that will always stay with me. Someone who was always accessible, who gave a very very gentle um, uh, and careful ear to our any uh, to all Congress people's concerns, and that dedication that he had to listening to everyone also ensured that he had a very long innings in the party organization. He was one of the most trusted, loyal leaders of the party and held a number of very, very important positions. But fundamentally, he was someone that you could count on to execute. If you said, okay, we've got to conduct organizational elections, he would take charge and, um, you know, and, and unroll the calendar and make sure that everything worked out very well. So in so many ways, he was um, uh, someone, I think, that every congressperson had an opportunity to interact with, to be connected with, to feel that, um, that he was an empathetic leader, and, and things of that sort that really, really made him such, um, uh, you know, such a reassuring presence at the highest levels of the party. In parliament, when I entered finally, because he had given me a lot of encouragement ahead of time, um, in 2004, when we had, uh, we were uh, in the opposition and um, it was India shining and it was a very, very difficult election. But, um, you know, the Congress had a very imaginative set of campaigns at that point, even though if we managed to counter the India shining um, agenda of the uh, BJP. And, um, and then we had a younger generation campaign that uh, we launched and picked up a whole bunch of youngsters. I was practically 40 years old, but still a youngster in, uh, in Congress uh, calculations. And, uh, uh, and uh, I, I, you know, he, they were all responsible, Oscarana, Mukul, Vasnik, to pick me as the person to launch this younger generation campaign in Guwahati, uh, along with Ragini Naik, who was at the NSUI at that time. And um, that got such amazing coverage. We were able to create a wave of um, uh, you know, basically, uh, you know, we showcased a whole younger generation of leaders, many of whom went on to become uh, ministers, and uh, some of them have um, not stayed with us, unfortunately. But 10 years after that, I managed to break into parliament, and I would uh, seek his advice on various occasions. And he, he, he would um, uh, give me, especially in the early days, when I wanted to understand how it were, how parliament worked, and for all those years of being a professor of politics and economics, there was so much to learn inside, on the ground, in the uh, you know, in the job, in the house. And he was a very patient guide, uh, and uh, you know, gave me a lot of insight into how to perform well. And I think my um, performance over the years um, owed a lot to him. And so there is one clip where I'm presiding over the house and he's speaking and he's talking about, um, uh, you know, uh, about how uh, he had met a driver who had been cured of cancer through somewhat unconventional natural methods. And that's something that people still uh, share and send me uh, and say, hey, you, uh, you were part of this as well. And I, yes, of course, I presided over that moment. But more than anything else, I must say that um, Oscar Anna, uh, and his memory will be very dear to all of us. It, it is, um, uh, you know, he is someone as a colleague, as a leader, as a guide, um, as as um, uh, as someone who was um, a wonderful, accessible uh, family person. Um, you know, he is someone that we will certainly miss, and I hope that all of us can be inspired by his example and deliver for the party and for the country in the way he showed us, um, you know, through his own life and, and his experiences. Thank you so much for inviting me to speak uh, on this uh, um, memorable occasion. And um, uh, again, my um, uh, best wishes to the family and all of us who care so much about Oscar and, and everything that he has left us with. Thank you, Dr. Rajiv Gowda. You know, you, you're so, you reminded us of so many things. It's something that are, some things that are common, right? Midnight and after midnight meetings and uh, his heart for the poor, his sensitivity to every individual, 
is uh, looking out for young people. You know, thank you for reminding us of, you know, this is the hallmarks of the great man. And uh, there's so much to share and talk about. And I'm sure when we meet as friends over a cup of tea or lunch or dinner or breakfast, there'll be much more to talk about. Uh, thank you so much for making this time. And do continue to enjoy the evening. Uh, we've got some music. The next uh, piece, uh, the next piece of music is a uh, hundred miles. This was Mr. Oscar Fernandez's favorite song. He sang with us on stage. A hundred miles. He used to sing. He used to play the mouth organ. And this is Little Ishanvi, uh, Narayan Swami singing a hundred miles. Hi everyone. I'm playing this song for five hundred miles. If you miss the train I'm on, you will know that I'm on. Sounds really nice if you sing with me. If you miss the train I'm on, you will know that I am on. You can hear the whistle blow a hundred miles, a hundred miles, a hundred miles, a hundred miles, a hundred miles. You can hear the whistle blow a hundred Um, thank you, Ishami. Thank you, Ishami. This that is was, uh, Oscar Fernandez's favorite song, which he used to play on his mouth organ and sing. And we remember him so much when we watch those videos. And every time we hear this song, we think about him. Thank you, Ishami. Uh, we have with us uh, Mr. Stanley De Cruz uh, from Sydney, Australia. Uh, Mr. Stanley, you know, Lorraine Music Academy is all about teaching the world, everyone across India and across the world to learn music. And because music is everyone's birthright. And Oscar Fernandez loved music and he believed in the cause and he supported us. And uh, Mr. Sandy de Cruz is supporting us as our first investor. And as we grow and as we scale up, we would reach out to friends and, and, and the world at large as we grow. But Mr. Stanley de Cruz, as uh, he will speak about Mr. Oscar Fernandez, having known him over the years and as a close member of the family, uh, thank you for being with us, uh, Mr. de Cruz. I look forward to hearing you. Sure. I would say again, uh, good morning in the US, uh, good afternoon in India, and in, good evening in Australia. Dear Mrs. Blossom Fernandez, Mrs. Oshani Fernandez, and Mr. Oshan Fernandez, and distinguished attendees of this great meeting. I really appreciate uh, Aubrey and uh, Lorraine uh, Eloysius of the Lorraine Music Academy in Gurgaon for giving me the opportunity to be a guest of honor and offer tributes to our great departed leader, Mr. Oscar Fernandez. Ever since his recent demise, various groups have been organizing homage meetings in many parts of the world. He has touched and moved so many people in many diverse ways and growing tributes are still flowing. 
Our family had the pleasure of knowing Mr. Oscar Fernandez and his family for the past many years. Although we were in Australia, we always made it a point to visit them during our trips to India. We will never forget the last two visits in Delhi in November 2019 and early last year, just, just before COVID-19. During both these occasions, although the late Oscar was recovering from illness, he made sure that we were well looked after. I also recall attending, we also recall attending the weddings of Oshani and Ocean and my wife Beryl and Mrs. Blossom and, and Oshani buying her actually wedding gown in George Street in Sydney, actually many years ago. Late Oscar was a staunch religious person. He lived and practiced the Bible teachings. In spite of his extremely busy schedule, he dedicated time for his family. He was an outstanding husband. Mrs. Blossom used to, always used to say, my Oscar, it was indeed your Oscar who gave you all the due importance and respect by making you to be present at whichever official event he attended. You also had the rare, rare privilege of, of visiting the Holy See, the Vatican in Rome, and meet Pope John Paul II, Pope Benedict, and as well as Pope Francis. We are sure that you will, you will nurture these great and rare moments. I also would like to recite a short a snippet of love between Oscar and Blossom. It goes like this, Oscar, Oscar, you are music lover. And Oscar replies, Blossom, Blossom, I am Blossom lover. As a most loving father, later, uh, late Oscar made it a point to attend to the needs of Oshani and Ocean during their entire education days. He inculcated to them the way to treat people with the respect and dignity. The most gracious aspect was that the late Oscar instructed his family not to use his name for any personal benefit. This is the greatness of the person. Late Oscar supported community and religious organizations without caste, creed, and religion. He would also visit Hindu temples and uh, Islamic mosques uh, and lays with them too. He also advised many archbishops, bishops, priests, and nuns. During the homage meeting organized in Sydney, Australia last month, Cardinal Oswald Gracious mentioned that he would miss a dear friend with whom he discussed the problems faced by the church in India today. I invited late Oscar to attend an anniversary event of the Mangalore Catholic Association in Sydney in 2012. He gladly obliged and attended with Mrs. Blossom and son Ocean. We are very grateful to him for that. When our members met him, they were really surprised at his humble nature and the capacity to meet and discuss with ordinary people. I would like to dwell on the remarkable virtue of selfless service provided by the late Oscar to people for so many decades. Ever since he became a counselor in Udupi in 1972, until the end, he always served people. He was a rice grower and was trying to resolve the issues of the farmers in the early 1970s. He had the longest and dedicated parliamentary service for almost 42 years with five terms in the Lok Sabha and four terms in the Rajya Sabha. He was well respected within the Congress party and the Indian government in both UPA 1 and UPA 2 terms. As Mrs. Sonia Gandhi said, late Oscar was the most non-controversial person in the party and said he was the most non-controversial person and was across all party lines. During his high levels within the party and at ministerial levels in the government, he always had limitless capacity to provide service to people, including to the very ordinary and the downtrodden. He used to meet people until the early morning hours for many years, which was truly remarkable. Late Oscar has played a big role in the, in the development of Mangalore and Woodpit district, as well as the state of Karnataka. 
Some of the projects of very short interest were the National Highway NH17 and other highways in both the district. Development of the new Mangalore port, the Mangalore refinery, MRPL, the Konkan Railway, and many other projects. He also would have played a role in the planning of the, of the oil st storage project in the Western Coast, although it was recently implemented, only a few years ago. All this all these does not mean that the late Oscar deprived funding to, to other states, which he would, would never do. Mr. and Mrs. Aubrey and Lorraine Aloysius, it's really very deserving that you are giving this musical homage to a great national leader, multi-talented and versatile artist, musician, dancer, yoga enthusiast, and, and a voracious reader in Kannada and Shakespeare. It's a wonder how he found time to do all this. He always carried a mouth organ in his pocket. And on one occasion, I asked him the purpose of doing so. And he told me, Stanley, I need to relax sometimes. And that's the time I play this mouth organ. The demise of the late Mr. Oscar Fernandez is a great loss to our community, Mangalore and Woodpe district, and Karnataka state as well as, as well as our great nation, India. He was a great nation builder and a rare gift for the entire world. Dear Mrs. Blossom, Oshani and Ocean, your Oscar is no more, but he is in heavenly place now and always will watch over you. Once again, on behalf of my wife, Beryl and myself, I pass on our heartfelt condolences to all of you. Mr. and Mrs. Aubrey and Lorraine Aloysius, we are very grateful for you for an, for an outstanding musical homage for an outstanding leader. Thank you very much and God bless you all. Thank you, Mr. Stanley de Cruz uh, for those wonderful words. Um, you know, we have another one of Oscar Fernandez's favorite songs in the sweet by and by being sung by two of our team members at Lorraine Music Academy. Uh, this is Arya Kanthan. Let's, let's listen to this wonderful, peaceful piece of music. You know, I, I, as, a, as an anecdote, I remember, um, uh, we, you know, this is one night, late in the night, past one o'clock uh, in the morning, and just looking at him, just, just a calmness on his face, despite the hectic day having passed. And we remarked to him, I think you remarked to him, saying that, you know, you, you, we need to rename you. Oscar Miles. Oscar Miles. Oscar Wise. Oscar Wise, you know. And uh, yeah. I mean, there are many memories, but let's listen to this song, this peaceful song that reflects the peaceful soul that of, of that of Oscar Fernandez. <laughs>
Thank you, Arya and Tan. That was a wonderful song. And this is a message from us all uh, at Lorraine Music Academy for Blossom, Oshani, and Osham. And we shall meet Oscar, the sweet pie and pie on the other show. Um, we have with us uh, Oscar Fernandez's daughter, Oshani Fernandez Saldana, with us. And Oshani, uh, really like to hear from your heart. Bear your heart out to us and to the world at large of the impact your dad has had on you. Yeah, very good evening to all of you. I'm ever so grateful and I thank each one of you taking, for taking the time out this Sunday evening to be and to participate in this tribute meet for my father. I would especially like to thank um, Professor Rajiv Gowda, who had such wonderful things to say about daddy. Um, Sam Patoda Ji, who will be joining us shortly. We have uh, Mr. J.D. Seelam, the former member of parliament, and uh, Mr. Stanley Cruz. And uh, also my cousin from the U.S., Christopher Vaz, who has composed something for us this evening. And last but not the least, Aubrey and Lorraine. You know, I'm so touched by your gesture of organizing this musical tribute in honor of my father. As much as we are grieving this monumental loss, you know, what greater way to honor daddy with music, which uh, meant the world to him. Music was everything to him. And uh, we all know how fond of music he really was. Today, when I look back at all the wonderful memories, uh, you know, spent with him, I just want everyone to celebrate the wonderful life he led and uh, the legend that he was. And, um, you know, today we're paying this homage with music. As they say, music is the universal language of mankind. It transcends boundaries, barriers. And to quote Shakespeare said, uh, if music be the food of love, then play on. My father was not the regular run-of-the-mill politician that you would come across. You know, while he rose in his political career, he reached the highest echelons of power. But he never let politics get in the way of his passion for the creative arts. He, um, you know, you, you would see him uh, kind of blending, intertwining his love for music, whether it was playing his mouth organ or see, singing, even at public events. And uh, dad has had this amazing uh, quality, if I may say, or a skill of troubleshooting problems, you know, whether it was, uh, you know, during his time in government or even in the Congress party or even with us at home, you know, he would just use his skills through not just through dialogue, but also would use music to convey the same message, which was so, so unique. And this re reminds me of a particular time that he once narrated to me and I heard from others as well. Uh, when he was the chief interlocutor for the Naga Peace Talks on behalf of the government and knowing fully well and aware of the fact that the Nagas loved, uh, you know, music and singing and all of that, um, he would start his meeting uh, you know, these meetings were held either in Amsterdam or Bangkok because those were neutral countries for, for the two parties to meet. And he would start the meeting, um, you know, with a small, meaningful prayer and, um, and would play, you know, tunes on his mouth organ and play songs like We Shall Overcome. And uh, what was, I mean, what could have been a better way of breaking the ice right away from the beginning? And uh, that's something which... All of them appreciated. And uh, since daddy's passing, uh, Mr. Moiva, who headed the, you know, the NSCN from the, on behalf of the Nagas, he wrote a special tribute letter and mentioned that about, uh, you know, my dad and how fond they were of him and, you know, the close association and how easily he made them, you know, he made them feel so much at ease. So that was one of those most remarkable qualities that dad had. And uh, in a nutshell, he would do things, you know, differently and very uniquely. 
So um, while my dad was often considered to be a powerful lawmaker, someone you know who had the power to influence national policy decisions. but something remarkable about him was that he you know he remained all the more grounded to his roots his uh, values and principles he to put it simply he was just the nicest humblest gentlest of human beings ever born and uh, bereft of any ego he never let a disagreement whether it was outside or at home to ever escalate into an argument he was a staunch believer that action speaks louder than words and uh, he taught us that you know harsh words or sentiments achieve little or nothing and they are of best left outside your doorstep and not even carried to the outside world so i fail to recall him preach anything to us if he really envisioned us to be the adults that he wanted us to be he would simply set an example by doing it himself and um he never never shied away from taking classes in classical indian dance um like the kuchipudi which he per- pursued even at the age of 60 which was a long standing passion of his he was a union union minister at that point in time he would take time out in the early hours of the morning barely get 4 hours of sleep because you know his yoga you know kuchipudi dance his workout in the gym meant so much to him that he would wake up so much earlier barely get 4 hours of sleep so that he could pursue these passions of his and uh, like i said he was a yoga enthusiast he was a yakshagana performer he could rattle off you know the mahabharat the ramayan although being a catholic himself he was someone who was very very secular and um, i remember once uh, i asked daddy um, you know because he would wear a kada a sikh kada on his hand and um, i asked him you know because it is it's a symbol of uh, you know the sikhs and uh, a very sacred element for them and uh, and i often wondered why he would wear it and he he once told me that you know that during the 1984 riots uh, which broke out in delhi and uh, you know he got a call from the prime minister um, you know from rajiv gandhi i mean who was not prime minister at that point in time but uh, he got a call from rajiv ji who had asked him you know to go help and uh, you know make sure these riots come to a halt and and uh, daddy did much as possible and he housed about 30 sikhs in our own delhi house and as a gesture of gratitude to him they they um, gave him this kada which he wore till his last and um, you know and that was something really special and you know so that showed that how much he respected other people's religions as much as being a devout catholic himself he never missed uh sunday mass uh he would say his daily rosary and uh, and just um and so on who would not preach the bible but live it himself you know he i i considered him to be the living bible so and also some of the other talents that he pursued was um he was an amazing chef at home he would whip up anything that we wanted from thai cuisine to italian food to to making indian chinese for us and our good old mangalorean food you know and it was quite a sight to see daddy you know literally sit on the floor and scrape coconut to be and extract the coconut milk and juice to be added into our fish curries and so he he really ensured that you know uh, while he was a busy politician he never meant uh, he never made us feel that uh, you know we needed to take take a back seat or uh, he couldn't give us time he always gave us quality time and uh, and that's what we are really really missing now that he's not around uh, so um but you know what really stood out about him was that uh, he combined humility simplicity patience his wit and humor his intelligence um just being very compassionate his honest honesty and um, integrity he he combined it so effortlessly and that to me you know uh basically 
made him epitomize a versatile and ideal human being so today although we don't have my father you know physically around but like obri said i just want to thank the lord for blessing my family and me with this incredible personality and just having encountered him and what better way for me to have you know been his daughter there was so much for me to learn and take away and still i mean he's left such a huge legacy and every day we think about him we can only think about all the wonderful things he has touched us with and today he leaves behind legions of admirers and well wishers and and we're just so grateful to all of you for being with us in this you know hour of grief and just comforting us and letting us know that all of you are here while dad has left this um you know left this planet left our planet earth for his heavenly abode but i know that he is walking beside us guiding us and just being around us all the time so thank you again all of you for joining us for this musical tribute and everybody who has been able to compose those little things you know um the little girl who played the guitar and sang 500 miles that that was a song which daddy really really loved and you know would often sing to us um you know he was somebody who uh was not very materialistic and i remember i was maybe as little as 4 or 5 and um, and i said this in my eulogy as well uh that you know most parents would teach little toddlers you know nursery rhymes but one of the first songs he taught me was money's the root of all evil take it away take it away you know so um that's how he taught us he he brought in music he brought in values principles so you know there's a huge tall order ahead of us that we have to live up to but knowing he's with us you know that gives us a lot of uh, comfort and um, and yes of course he'll be dearly and greatly missed so thank you thank you ushani for those words you know no we stand with you and the family and we're so glad uh you know uh we're so grateful to god once again for you know meeting and and experiencing this wonderful soul oscar fernandez he's had a great impact as we can see on on your mother and on your dear mother blossom she was sharing with us uh mm-hmm. sweet stories of her first the first journey from bangalore to delhi the day after the wedding and the songs that we used to sing on that journey i mean he, he was he was musical oscar wasn't he a yeah. musical father a musical husband and a romantic husband and and so much of music in him and i think you know this just epitomizes the fact of what we believe in that music impacts a human being so much and transform the uh, transforms or it has a capacity to transform a human being so much that they can go on to do so much more than what seems to be possible and that's so much embodied in your father's life just look at what he has achieved look at what he has done i mean it's amazing simply amazing and we're inspired we continue to be inspired and i just want to say this oshani as i'm listening to you i mean there are feelings and emotions that i'm running through and i can understand what you're going through uh, you know you and oshan and your dear mother as uh, you know his children and his wife all i want to say is here is a life worth celebrating here is a life worth emulating and there's so much to learn and so much to imbibe and so much to follow and uh, i look forward to the 27th of march when we will celebrate you, uh, his birthday and uh, i just want to make this advance notice uh, announcement to everyone that we would on the 27th of march which is a sunday at 5 pm india standard time have a musical celebration and let's bring out the even more stories and even more songs and memories from his life so let's move on let's continue walking together in that journey all right and uh, let's see the next song that we have um, we have little agastya dhingra singing the song precious lord
when my way grows drear, precious Lord, linger near. When my night is on, most gone. Thank you. You know, that is a dear uh, Augusta, Augustia Dingra, a very special child, you know, and it's, it's a testimony of what music can do to transform lives. And we've seen a transformation in Augustia's life in just less than two years, what music has done. And here is another, uh, welcome, uh, Dr. Sam Pitroda. Thank you so much for waking up so early in the morning. Uh, namaste to you from all of us. And we're so glad that you could make it. It's very, very early in the morning in Chicago, I know. And you... you I, already, I, I already had one meeting. I know. At, you, you I'm go. Amazing, amazing. Thank you so much for making it. And we're going to have one song um, sung by Bobby Cash. Um, uh, it's called Just a Closer Walk With Thee. And let's enjoy this uh, song. Uh, it's one of Oscar's favorite songs. And then... Let's move on from there. Thanks. I'm weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all. Yeah. 
That's a perfect setting for uh, us to uh, have uh, Dr. Sam Petroda uh, share his thoughts and views on uh, the past, present, and future, uh, and, and the amazing uh, impact of the man, Mr. Oscar Fernandez, that we've known. And Dr. Sam Petroda needs no introduction. He's a man who is an inventor and an entrepreneur. And he has transformed India. And we're so grateful, sir, for all that you've done for the nation as a nation builder. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Aubrey. Sincerely appreciate the opportunity to say a few words about my friend, Oscar Fernandez. Oscar and I met in 1985. <clears throat> 86, <clears throat> I got a phone call from Rajiv Gandhi saying, I'm going to send three, four young politicians to Akbar Hotel to meet you. I was young, did not know enough about politics. Still, I'm learning. And I saw these four bright young people come to my office. Gulam Nabi Azad and Oscar Fernandez were two I immediately caught on to. <clears throat> Oscar was very special because he said very little, but he said a lot. He knew what to say, when to say, how much to say. And to me, that's a piece of art. He was very quiet, but deep. And he made a huge impression on me in my first visit with him. Then we became friends in a very special way. <clears throat> we did not socialize much, but we continued our relationship. I'm one of those who really don't socialize at all. I don't go to weddings. I don't go to parties. I don't go to dinners. And I saw in Oscar a very special man. When he was minister in various governments, I interacted with him. Whenever I had labor issues, as the head of telecom department, I asked for his advice and I got his advice. We worked during election together on various issues, quietly in the background. Nobody knew that we had anything to do with any of these issues. Our relationship was very private. We interacted a lot at the board meeting of the National Herald. We both have been on the board. As you know, there is a big court case going on for the last seven years, where we are all charged. And we know it's all bogus. <clears throat> and we realize that we have a duty to perform, and he was big on his duty. I have never seen Oscar raise his voice. Maybe he does raise on and off, but I have never seen him. I've never seen him also say no to anything. He would always say, yeah, yeah, okay, we'll look at it, we'll do it. If you go to him, you know that you'll get support and sympathy, understanding. He won't argue. He won't let you down. He will do his best to help you. And he had a lot of wisdom, which many people didn't recognize. 
because he was not flashy. He was humble. He was respectful of different opinion. And he was a team player, which is very difficult to find at certain level. We worked together well <coughs> with people like Ahmad Bai, Mutilal Vora, and others in politics, friends like Suman Dubey and others outside politics. We talked about deep issues related to business on finance, labor, because we have and had challenges at National Herald that we collectively solved together. He attended every meeting, even when he was not well. In one of the meetings, I could sense that he was not well, but he attended that. He took his duties very seriously. I knew what he was going through. He and I had briefly talked about it. But he was very open, concerned, but knew what was coming. And he handled with great deal of tender care. I know the family, I know his wife, I know his son, and I know how difficult it is for the family to lose a person like that. But I want to assure them that he is leaving a great legacy behind. And it is a legacy full of love, friendship, concern for humanity, commitment to India, and that legacy is unique. He's living a lot more than the wealth people leave. His wealth is very different. I know it because I've sensed his wealth. To me, he was a very rich man in many, many ways. He made an impact on my life and I'm sure he made an impact on lives of the many, many millions. So I want family to know that Oscar's legacy will live very long. He leaves behind not only a great family, but a great value system. A lot of hard work, friendship, and sweet memories of the interactions we had with him. I will miss him. I know family will miss him forever, but all of us can draw strength from his life, wisdom, to move on and follow part of his journey, part of his value. I want to thank Aubrey for giving me this unique opportunity to talk to the family. I'm stuck in the US because of COVID. Next time when I come there, I would try to meet the family. Thank but I know in this hyper-connected world, what we are doing today is as good as connecting. I'm always available for any help you need because I have great respect for my friend, Oscar Fernandez. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That is so wonderful. That's so wonderful. And so you're so right. It's a hyper-connected world. There was a time when we had to wait for six months for a tatkal telephone, and here we are. On Zoom. When, when, when you called me, Aubrey, I agreed, immediately agreed that I would love to say a few words to family and others. And thank you for giving me this opportunity. Unfortunately, I had another conflict with a talk in Bahrain or, yeah, Bahrain, not Oman. 
and I got stuck with it. So thank you for adjusting it. You know, I got up at 4.30 in the morning, had another talk now, and then I have next one at 8.30. So I do these. Sometimes I do five or six of these a day. Amazing. Okay. And it works well. I like this better than going to office. <laughs> so do we, sir. So do we. In fact, we're thrilled. You know, we can talk about technology and what technology is done thanks to you, okay, sir. Nice about this is you don't have to dress up, you don't have to polish your shoes, you don't have to do laundry with all your shirts every week, you know, and I love it. Okay. <laughs> you cannot know what is underneath the shirt. You know what's above. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So we should. Did you talk about the future of technology another day? We'll get back to that session again. But thank you for sure. coming. Thank you for sharing your heart and for your support for all the good work that good people in India. Do I see Gargi, do I see Gargi here? Yes, yes. Gargi is here. Hi, Gargi. How are you? Hello, sir. How are you? Oh, my goodness. I first, that first let me uh, give my condolences to Oshani and family. Sir was very, very dear to us. You know that. Yeah, so we have lost somebody. And we will definitely, we will miss him. I don't want to shed my to tears today. We have to celebrate his life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay. it's after a very long time that I'm seeing Oshani. I'm sorry, I'm not getting my tissue napkin. Okay. It's okay. How are you, sir? How are you? I just saw you and I said, ah, that's Gargi. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a long time. We do remember you. We miss you. It was wonderful, you know, meeting so many no, times yeah. and host, having great, great, great discussions. Well, I can tell you, you have been a very good host whenever thank I came you. to you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now I, we are in Dubai at I, the moment. Sorry. We haven't connected that well, Oshani. Be in touch. Anything I can do, let me know. Oshani, it's great, you great to meet. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, Samji. Um, I spoke before you, so I don't know if you were able to hear my speech, but uh, I have to especially thank you because I've heard so much about you through dad. And unfortunately, um, I've not got to meet you, but although Ocean has met you and has had a close relationship with you, but I really want to thank you because this is not the first time. I think there have been a couple of other meetings as well that you have come and spoken and given your heartfelt tribute to my father. And uh, we're so touched because, uh, you know, it's when, when somebody leaves this world, they don't really know, um, you know, how many people people are left behind who actually think about them who remember them for what they were but you especially are one such person and uh, like you said you know um, your relationship dates back to Rajiv's G's days and and that was a special era because um, you know it was a bunch of young people who were picked up and groomed and uh, who obviously went on to build this nation over the last few decades I was and also young at one time I was also young at one time. Correct. Yes. And, you know, you've been such a great instrumental part of building this nation. And we thank you as citizens of this country for everything that you have done and the services rendered. And we hope to have you back in India soon, as soon as you can get to travel back. And we definitely want to meet you and personally touch base with you. Thank, thank you. you. I'm 80 years old now. Oh, you gosh. Know? My father was 80 as well, but you I hardly look at yeah. I know that. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> They're just about the same age, you know. I was born in 1942. Okay, right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, keep good health and we will pray for you and we want you around for a long, long time. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Remember, we have to celebrate his life. Don't yeah. That's right. Sad. Don't be sad. That's right. Sir, uh, echoing, echoing what you've just said before you came in and just after Oshani spoke, we uh, have just announced that on the 27th of March, 2022, which is Oscar Fernandez's birthday, it will be his 80th birthday, if I'm not mistaken, Oshani. 81. 81st birthday, yes. 81st birthday. So on the 27th of March, 2022, if we could request you to block your diary, sir, uh, <laughs> at 7 p.m. IST, we'll have a That's celebration. Good. You have to bug me. That's all. Okay? Because if I promise you now, I'll forget. So if no you problem. bug me earlier enough, 
it will happen i will find time i'll drop anything else i have all right thank you how sweet that that is so sweet and kind of you thank you that will be fun thank you i thank don't you take so much. much thank you so much thank you for the program i'm here yes okay. please thank please you. stay on and there's wonderfully wonderful music ahead uh, but the, on on that same note of nation building i think we need to see another leg oshani and i would echo in saying this that sir the great service you've done to the nation we desire the nation to progress and i think there's much more we can do in telecommunication and technology and we'd love to engage in conversations with you on that but that is for another day and time we'll do that yeah. right thank you sir and the problem uh, problem today is not technology okay problem today is democracy hmm. scientific mindset institution building problem today is civil society problem today are very different technology is insignificant right but if you don't have democratic mindset independent institutions scientific mindset and civil society you can't move and that's where we are stuck you know but anyway that's a separate topic altogether we'll work on it sir we'll work on it thank you so much yes, and now let's let's enjoy another piece of music by a 16 year old anika batnagar singing the song abide with me and oshani this is another one of uh, dad's favorite isn't it abide yes. with me yeah Oscar Fernandez loved his music and today we are remembering his life also through the music that he loved as we love him we will reflect his life through the music he loved another piece of music that he very much enjoyed was the song the amazing song amazing grace and this song amazing grace is sung by a little um 16 year old 16 year old yes yeah, he's not little he's 16 year old he's great to be a bad Uh, he's, Nikhil, he's not a student of Lorraine Music Academy. He is uh, uh, he's a guest singer today. He studied at the KM Conservatory. He studied piano there. But he loves music and he loves singing. And it's so wonderful to see these young people sing these hymns and the old songs that Oscar loved. And we're so happy to see them just uh, you know get on and sing it. We just told them, why don't you sing, prepare these pieces? And they just readily agreed, learnt them, and they love this music. as well as their modern music so let's enjoy nikhil who plays the guitar he plays the piano he sings and he acts and he's a dynamic boy let's let's hear him singing amazing grace
That was very moving uh, singing, Nikhil, and that's a lot of emotions in it, uh, and and it comes through so beautifully. Uh, we have oh, we have Lincoln Star Matthew joining us. Uh, yeah, we still we still have people joining us both on Zoom as well as Facebook Live. Uh, so we have a huge gathering, and I'm sure there'll be a million people, more than a million people, watching it over a, a few days or weeks. Uh, the next song is sung by Zivanka Bharadwaj. You know, one of the aspects of Oscar Fernandez is, is his smile. He always had a smile. And this song is titled Smile. It is to encourage all of us to smile, no matter what the situation. He always had a smile on his face. He was never, never showed his sadness. I remember him smiling all the time, despite the situations that he probably went through and despite the problems that he was solving. And so that's a message for all of us, I think. Smile. To be cheerful. Smile. Yes. Smile. Wasn't that cute? But that's the innocence that we all need to have. You know, we need to be like little children yes. and, uh, you know, cast off our worries and uh, just be cheerful and smile and look forward. Uh, great example in Oscar Fernandez. He used to do this and a lot to learn. Uh, you know, yeah. Okay. I, I just uh, remember, I, I can never forget spending many hours in the office of Oscar Fernandez when we were. Uh, doing this project, Tam India Singh, Janakanamana. We would spend many hours in his office uh, waiting for him to have some time. And we would just be observing him at his work and how he dealt with people, people in his office, people outside the office, hundreds of people waiting for him. But he was so sensitive to every person who came to him for help. The poorest of the poor and everybody else, he just knew what everyone was going through and he made everyone feel very special. And uh, I was uh, really touched by him and the way he, he was such a people's person and he genuinely loved people. And people were thronged outside his office, just having full faith that he would do something for them. And he always did. And uh, once I was reading a book, I was carrying a book with me, a book uh, by Oscar Wilde, the famous author. And uh, Oscar, Oscar Fernandez, the late Oscar Fernandez, noticed my uh, reading uh, my book and he said oh you're reading this wonderful book great author great book good choice so I told him I said you know sir I'm actually reading you you are the greater Oscar you we're observing you we've been observing you for a long time and you are not Oscar Wilde but you are Oscar Wise and you are Oscar mild because you're so mild and you're so wise. And he really was so, uh, even though he had such a great position and so much of power, he was always so meek. He was humble. He was so sincere. 
And that's the message that we take back from his life. And his life continues to be, uh, to impact us very, very greatly. And we're so blessed and grateful to have had him in our life. And he has a very special place also in the life of Lorraine Music Academy because he's so, uh, he thinks big, thinks scale. And when he was talking to us about music education, he said, hey, what are you doing teaching music like this? You should be in a stadium teaching music. You should scale up. You should be big. You, you have the potential to do that. Come on, change the strategy. So we have, uh, we, and we, would, we, we, we are doing something on those lines right now, you know, online education. And Oscar Fernandez is, has played a great role in the life of Lorraine Music Academy. And that is why we really think the least we can do is pay him a special, special music, musical tribute. We are very blessed to have known him. And uh, we, we extend our heartfelt condolences to Dear Blossom and Oshani and Oshan and all members of the family and all friends of Oscars and all of you present here today. Thank you for coming and being here with us. Yeah, you know, and, and, and Oscar had many children, you know, many, many, when I interact with people, they say he was my father, you know, Oshani, he was a father to many. Mm -hmm. And I think when I look at Ashfaq, when I think of many others, you know, I mean, there are many who looked up to him as a father. Uh, I'll, I'll speak next, but before that, you know, Oshani, you have a cousin called Christopher Vaz in Washington, D.C., and he and the family are traveling to New York and they recorded this song, which is, again, uh, your dad's favorite song, 500 Miles. And uh, so very grateful, Christopher, for doing this. And I believe Christopher is Oscar Fernandez's eldest sister's mm -hmm. son and uh, quite often the first nephew, you know, is your favorite nephew. <laughs> Can be. It's so... If we, we, we're going to we're going to listen to the song and then and uh, we, we'll we'll continue. Yeah, five hundred miles. Christopher Vaz from New York, who's settled in Washington D.C., sends his love. My late uncle Oscar, this is for you. Um, I miss you. I really, really miss you, uncle. Um, and I heard that this is one of your favorite songs. I was asked to do it, so I'm going to do it for you. And I know that wherever you are looking upon me and saying, nephew Christopher, I love what you're doing. So this is for you, Uncle. If you miss the train I'm on, you will know that I am gone. You can hear the whistle blow a hundred miles. A hundred miles, whoa, a hundred miles, a hundred miles, a hundred miles. You can hear the whistle blow. A hundred miles, Lord, I'm one, Lord, I'm two, oh, Lord, I'm three, Lord, I'm four, Lord, I'm five hundred miles. You know. Uh, away from home, away from home, away from home, away from home, away from home. Lord, I'm 500 miles away from home. Not a shirt on my back, you know, I don't have a penny to my name.
can hear the whistle blow 500 miles Sing it with me A hundred miles A hundred miles Whoa A hundred miles A hundred miles You can hear the whistle blow Give it up for my, my cameraman here, Albert Thomas, singing with me. All right. Love you, Uncle. Love you, too. <laughs> Thank you, Christopher. That, that was, was wonderful, real Christopher. Treat, Christopher. And uh, we're so happy that you played for us. And we look forward to much more from you in the future. And we want to we want to say that music runs in the blood, in Oscar Fernandez's blood, his nephews. <laughs> Play music. His grandson, I know Odin, was going for piano class the other day. And Oshan, yeah. all of you are full of music. And I cannot forget Rosemary, who's online. Rosemary, please switch your camera on. Rosemary is uh, Oscar's niece and Oshani's uh, first cousin, I think. Yes. And I believe her children are also very good at music. And uh, we have a connection through my godfather, Henry D'Souza, who's a great singer and who's also related to them. So music, we should do a tribute to Oscar and his family, musicians should participate and we should make the world even more alive with all yeah. kinds of music, not and Konkani music, Hindi music, Kuchipuri dancing, and Gujarati, Gujarati, music, Gujarati music, Marathi music. Marathi music. I think Oscar loved all kinds of music. So let's have fun with music yeah. and Oscar. And I think Oshan and Oshani, this is the legacy, you know, of, of a man who is actually person personified the, the creative arts. And, uh, you know, um, Sam Petroda sir will agree that nation building is many, fab many threads woven into a fabric into the nation. And there's music and art that is one of the fundamentals. I mean, just imagine a Punjabi uh, a boy understanding a Tamilian music. And that's the nation of India. That's the yeah. beauty of India. A Gujarati a girl understanding a Bengali song of Rabindra Sangeet. Mm -hmm. That is the India we're talking about. That's the India that we... So I think music has great uh, potential. And I want to pay this tribute to Oscar Fernandez. I have met him, you know, with flashbacks. I have met him at airports. I have met him in his home. I have met him in his political office. I've met him in his ministerial office. I've met him in his parliamentarian office. I met him in uh, <laughs> Andhra Bhavan canteen. <laughs> I've met him on the road, you know. So everywhere I have met him, he, he keeps inspiring me. And I remember this, he used to say, Aubrey, you've got to impact India, 1.4 billion, you know, now it's 1.4 billion through music. You've got to be, as Lorraine said, you've got to be on the stadium. And it gave me a big picture. You see, he was a big picture man. I was a big picture man, but I needed someone to push me, right? And here was Oscar Fernandez pushing me in that right direction. And here we are using technology. Sam Petrola, the man of technology. We're using technology right now. We've got students currently from North America, right through Australia. And the, the, the least we can do is remember Oscar Fernandez for his love for music and for his love for nation building. And India is 1.4 billion, but the Indian diaspora is across the world. And Sam, you represent uh, the Indian diaspora. And we've got a great impact to make on the globe as a leading nation. So let's look at the next 40 years. And uh, uh, I want to just come back to uh, our discussion. I remember once I was having in the parliamentarian office of Oscar Fernandez, where, and we've been discussing this for almost two years, you know, uh, he and I and we. And I said, there's one song. If there's one song that could unite the nation in building the nation, there's only one song. That whether it's a Gujarati boy or a Bengali girl or a Tamilian man or you know a, a North Indian woman will sing. And that's our national anthem, Chan Kanman. 
to be sung in 52 seconds. And so we built this program and we launched it on the 15th of August, 2013. He had actually wanted me to do it at the Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium in a big fashion with 50,000 audience. But that particular 15th of August, 2013 was a weekday. And the uh, security, pa you know, uh, the security. Uh, 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 the security, uh, you know, inputs was that I should ideally have it on Sunday because that's Sunday is the only day we can sanitize the area. So we then pulled it back. But what I'm saying is, you're, this is a four minute clip I want to show the audience and uh, Dr. Sam Petroda in closing, uh, have, a, have a look at this four minute clip. Uh, really, that is what I remember. If I can take back and look at the next 40 years, building the nation of India through one song, through the various fabrics of culture, through music, art, and culture, and, and across through the diaspora, I think that's nation building. Through technology, through democracy, through the freedom of expression, through every form of democracy or democratic values that we uphold, I think music, art, and culture is embodied in it. Everyone loves to sing. A farmer loves to sing. A fisherwoman or fisherman loves to sing. A soldier uh, loves to soldier sing. Loves to sing. And farmers and soldiers are the, you know, the heartbeat of India. Um, we're talking about we as a nation, as a nation of bathroom singers. So <laughs> that's in jest. Uh, let's just have a look at this four-minute clip and let's stand and sing our national anthem in closing, shall we? On the 67th year of independence, a special program Jan Ganman has been celebrated in Gurgaon Epicenter Auditorium where Sri Oscar Fernandez, Honorable Minister of Roadways, Transport and Highways, graced the occasion with his presence. We cherish independence which was given to Indians by the sacrifice of our freedom fighters and we remember and celebrate the occasion in their honor. Colorfully dressed school children gave their variety program to celebrate Independence Day and their performances were enjoyed by everyone around. Six years since we have had our independence, and we are honored to have our chief guest, Sri Oscar Fernandez Ji, Honorable Minister of Road Transport and Highways, being present here. Thank you, sir, for gracing the occasion. देश का सारे निवासियों को पसंद होने वाले एक कार्यक्रम एक कार्यक्रम में कोई डिफरेंसेस नहीं है कंट्रोवर्सी नहीं है देश का सारा लोगों को कट्टा करने वाले कार्यक्रम में एक राग में एक स्वर में बोलने वाले कार्यक्रम में वही जन गण मन ये कार्यक्रम में कोई फर्क नहीं सारा देश का निवासी लोग एक आवाज में बोलेंगे जन गण मन या कैन वी एट दिस टाइम स्टैंड एंड सिंग आर नेशनल एंथम विथ प्राइड पैशन एंड प्रिसिशन व्हिच इज इन 52 सेकंड्स
thank you so much, each one of you, for being present. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sam Petroda. Really appreciate your time and look forward to the future, to building the nation of India. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Oshan, Oshani, Dr. Stanley De Cruz, and all the guests that have come in today and making time. Ashwat, thank you for making your time available. Uh, you've got to catch up with each one of us. Uh, and, and there are there, 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 there are plenty of uh, people watching on Facebook Live. And do go back to Facebook and we will also post another separate video and send a message. Uh, and let's continue to be in touch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Welcome to Lorraine Music Academy. We bring world music to you. Lorraine Music Academy exists to access and promote the rich heritage of world music to all those who love music and desire to appreciate and play an instrument, whether it be piano, guitar, violin, drums, or singing. We bring music to children, their families, and the community at large and serve the community through education workshops, recitals, concerts, and public performances. Our experience over the years confirms that children who learn music achieve a significantly higher level of excellence in anything they do. Discover your hidden musical and creative talent. Book your appointment now for your musical evaluation session by clicking the link in the description www.lorrainemusicacademy.com We will help make your musical dream come true.